did we just make a game about stealing donuts from donut-loving cops? Well, yeah, I guess we did. Hey guys, Manisha here. So this week we participated in the CCC Game Jam, and the theme was playing both sides. Unlike last time, we weren't going to spend so much time on the theme, so we got started. And of course, with my love for puzzles, I got started with a 2D puzzle game. So in this game, you would interact with both sides, put together two pieces of evidence, and answer a question at the end. So we finally went to bed, which is the perfect time to overthink all your life decisions. And I think my gut was telling me something. Remember your last game? It sucked! And by sucked, I think he just meant it wasn't fun enough. So of course we couldn't let that happen again, and we decided to scrap that idea. It really sucks that we had to waste one whole weekend day because we both do work full time, but it was worth it for a better idea. So I started our new game by creating a 3D room environment. This new game is actually heavily inspired by one of the puzzles I played in the Professor Layton series, so I don't really want to take any credit for originality on the mechanics. And this was actually our first time making a 3D game, but we were ready to take on a challenge and do the best we could. So the first step was to give our robber, Vic Sprinkle, some movement. The movement was going to be grid-based, so we take the direction, multiply it by a vector, and move the player object to the new position. We also wanted to make sure that the player object could not move through any obstacles, so we use a raycast for that. We set up an end level door to make sure that there's an objective for each level, and then I got started on making the police object. So the police can see up to two squares in front of them, so we want to make sure the flashlight extends to that amount. At this point, we had a Trello board set up and put in any basic tasks. So the cool thing about the cop objects are that they each have their own unique route. I'm not entirely sure if I did this the most efficient way, but I created a prefab for the cop and designated their route in an array. So now I just had to make sure that the player input also affects the cop movement. This is basically how we applied our theme of playing both sides. Doing this wasn't very difficult. The player would move, we would check if it would be a valid move, send a call to the cops manager, and make all the cops move one step on their route. We also had a step counter to keep track of how many valid moves were taken. So 3D modeling is completely new for us. But my sister finally had the tiled floor done. After I put this in, things were looking better, but it was time to apply that post-processing magic that I had just learned about. So yeah, the uh, blender models weren't really working out, so I decided to do the best I could with Unity's 3D shapes. And while messing around, I think it was starting to look like a donut shop. So a problem that I encountered halfway was noticing that the tiled floor wasn't exactly even, and this affected the cops' movement because sometimes they would move in between two tiles. I probably should have thought of a more snappier movement solution for that. Another dumb thing I did was using a collider for the flashlight instead of a raycast, and that just totally slipped my mind. This is where our donut came in, and I added a little particle system so that it felt satisfying when you actually got the donut. At this point, things were mostly functional, the mechanics weren't that hard to implement. I did come across a couple bugs where the player and the cop would bump into each other if they were on consecutive tiles. I did get to fix most of them by disabling the flashlight or just adding a little delay for the cop's movement, but I think there was still one case that I didn't get to fix. So here I'm just making things look pretty by adding some lighting at the top, I added a random ATM machine in there, and I'm constantly fixing the post-processing because it never feels right. At first we wanted to have a maximum amount of steps you could take, but it already seemed challenging enough so I just scrapped that idea. We were also wondering if and how we should show the user that they got the donut. We were thinking of making this a UI element at the top, but this really takes away from the immersion of a 3D game, so instead we thought of making the door light up when you got the donut. And here's me handcrafting the most beautiful stool you've ever seen. Oh right, I forgot to mention that we got the capsule characters from the Unity store because we were still incapable of blender modeling. And of course our Trello board was super helpful this time because after work I would totally forget about what I worked on the previous day. As for level designing, I didn't really plan this out too much. It was mostly a process of trial and error to see what works and what doesn't. I'm so sorry about this devlog not being broken into the different days, but I just totally forgot to keep track of that. 
I know for sure that I did the game over screen, pause menu, and the main menu on the last day because it was really easy to put that stuff in. So my sister had finished the main menu graphics and I put that in, animated it a bit, and I think we were ready to wrap up. I'm pretty proud of how this game came out, especially for our first 3D game. There's a couple of subtle things in here that I really liked. I don't know if anyone noticed it, but I'm just gonna go through them. So in the beginning of each level, there's a little intro zoom out, and I think that really matches the music and gets you excited to play the level. Another thing I added were the footsteps and a little bit of foot dust behind the robber. It's pretty quiet, but I think it really adds to the impact of moving around one step at a time. And the last thing is just not having a static camera. It's always moving very slightly. This is something I've just seen in TV, and I think it helps the user feel more involved. But of course, along with the goods come the bads. This was definitely a safe game jam entry. We didn't try anything too ridiculous, and the mechanics were pretty simple. There also seemed to be a problem with the flashlights. It would sometimes shine all over the floor, and I'm not really sure why, but I think I just have to get some more practice with lighting in 3D. But yeah, if you uh, enjoyed watching this devlog, please do try out the game and tell me what you think. So that's all for now. I do hope to start a longer term project soon, so hopefully we can see some devlogs about that. See you next time!